Hey everyone, welcome to Surf Soon, a numerically rated Surfcraft review series. If you dig this episode, please hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe. Now let's get to the show. In this episode, I'll be reviewing a 9.6 Tar Pits 2.0 by Clean Ocean Surfboards. The Tar Pits 2.0 is Trent Phillips and Clean Ocean Surfboards' second collaborative surfboard. Although the original Tar Pits was an amazing all-around log, Trent wanted to develop a board that was a little more friendly in mushy surf. Pushing that wide point above center to give it a little more wiggle room on the nose, the outline also is a bit more parallel than the first Tar Pits, adding a pointy nose and wide pintail to help with maneuvering. Will this creation work in everyday surf? Well, let's get a closer look. The rocker is pretty low, but continuous and peaking at the nose and tail. The nose has a 50-50 rail to a fuller 60-40, continuing to a more foiled 60-40 in the tail. The bottom has slight concave, then goes pretty flat, but the bottom is turned up for sitting lower in the water. Okay, so first thoughts on the Tar Pits 2.0. I actually picked this up at a board swap in Bayhead with the uh, Beach House guys and Trent happened to be there. I think he comes up every, uh, I guess annually for it and got to talk to him kind of a little bit about this board itself. I'm a big fan of his surfing. I think he surfs really well and kind of wanted to see what he was riding. Uh, the original Tar Pits, I believe was a little bit more of a wide point back a um, little different outline, so, and obviously this has the big wide tail with a pin. So really wanted to see kind of what the switch up was all about. But uh, yeah, let's get the categories and kind of figure this thing out. Okay, so nose riding gave it 7.5 and uh, has a good amount of nose rocker, has a good amount of tail rocker, which obviously will help with lift, but doesn't have a lot of concave. So what that does is it, kind of keeps it nice and speedy when you're walking up. And especially when you get right here, you really feel this thing start to kind of lift just a tad. And uh, it's not the longest nose rides that I've had, but it's definitely nice and quick and fun. Um, obviously the width and the tail helps kind of suck it back. I have found with East Coast style waves, especially wind chop, the rocker is more important than the concave at times just kind of keeping it speedy and uh, kind of keeps it an all-around nose rider style instead of just a designated nose rider so maneuver i gave it an eight uh, the wide tail really kind of gives it that whole drawn out pivot turn style and uh, does give that very, very stylish look that Trent kind of focuses a lot of his surfing on, which makes it really fun and fun to watch. Um, I got to admit, going back onto boards that don't have edge in the tail are a little tricky for me, but this board felt pretty good. It felt different with different fins, and we'll talk about that at the end, but um, it does turn you know, there's a lot of area in front. This is a more wide point forward log. So there is more area in front of you than behind you. So that was a little tricky, but it does turn pretty well for the size. So Trim, I gave it a nine and uh, actually funny talking to Trent. Uh, he really likes a board that trims very well and allows him to put more style points on his surfing. And this board definitely does that. You can really just stand kind of wherever on it. And it just goes through sections without a problem. Goes through deep spots, which is super important for a East Coast beach break style longboard. Um, also, the rails do definitely help. It's, it's not a 50-50-ish rail. It's more of a, I would say more of a 60-40. So it definitely has a little bit more push to it, but all in all, it moves through water 
really well, especially with a little bit of speed behind it and uh, makes it super fun. So volume distribution, um, as you can see, pointy nose, pointy tail, wide tail, uh, not crazy wide nose, but they're right in that 17 area, both uh, from 12 inches from the top and bottom. So volume wise, you know, this thing feels almost like a double ender. Um, all in all, very stable through all of the board, uh, you know, turns from the tail, trims from the middle or from like right here. It trims well from right here, speeds up right here, and then quick nose rides are certainly achievable. Um, you know, good job as far as volume, and it doesn't feel super bulky, uh, even though it is one of those boards that has technically more volume in the front of the board compared to the back of the board. Paddling, I gave it an eight. And um, for a board with a good amount of nose rocker and a good amount of tail rocker, there's not really a ton of board in the water, but it paddles really well. Um, it, it, it paddles, I guess, longer than it seems, but I think it's the way that they distribute the volume. You know, most of the volume is kind of underneath your chest, so uh, it's kind of helping with the flotation, but definitely paddles really well, knee paddles very well, very classic. Uh, yeah, paddles through chop really well, paddles in little waves really well pretty impressed good paddlers are good paddlers good paddler special moments I gave an eight and uh, this thing was this thing was a lot of fun I'm used to riding recently more uh, boards that are maybe a little wider in the tail wide point back and maybe a little narrower in the nose and this was something fun and a little different I really dug the like classic bottom turns, you know, the drop knee style turns that were happening. Um, you know, you could kind of see why Trent really likes this board. It's very classic. Uh, had a lot of really, really fun waves on it. Uh, definitely, again, not what I would normally ride as a day-to-day, -day, but a nice transition board. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna speak about that more in just a sec. All right, so as far as fins, I rode two different styles. I rode the NVS. This is kind of like a Greeno style fin. Uh, this is what Trent had actually suggested. He said, go 10.5 Greeno style template. And uh, that's what he feels has been working the best. I like this fin, but it still has a little bit of flex to it. And I found that I kind of like this fin a little bit more. It's just a little bit of a wider template in the tip. And I just felt it kind of helped as far as nose riding or being able to be up there. Um, this is the Connie Stewart, the Kai Salas Flying Diamonds fin. And I just felt that this kind of connected a little bit more with the waves that I was surfing and had a little bit more fun with this one. Final thoughts and kind of continuing from special moments. A designated nose rider, they're not really fun to surf all the time unless you have that perfect lined up wave. And in New Jersey, East Coast, North Carolina, um, a lot of places south of New York, I suppose I would say. And I'm not talking about uh, Montauk, I'm talking about beach breaks clunky nose riders are really hard to surf and this is something that you know you can get some tip time but you can also really work on everything that's going on in the back half of the board as well and uh all in all i wouldn't say it's maybe the best uh first long board for someone that's beginning but it is a great board for someone that's experienced and maybe wants a very versatile uh, kind of day-to-day style board. Definitely great job, Trent, and uh, stoked on this and stoked on what you're doing. Thank you everyone for tuning in. If you like this episode, please hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. Feel free to share, comment, and all that good stuff.
Until next time, there are always waves on the way. So hang tight, surf soon.